Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. We are so excited to have everyone here today. My name is Susan Moore. I'm the Community Engagement Manager here at IIBA, and what a pleasure to have Scott Helmers, one of six Microsoft MVPs for Visio in the world. So we're going to be talking about 16 Visio tips in 60 minutes. Let me give you a, a little bit of housekeeping and then a quick intro, and I'm going to turn it right over to Scott. So again, we want to thank everybody for joining us. We love it when you use chat. So please talk to us and talk to each other in chat. If you have questions, we will take some questions and you can use the Q&A box for that. Also, we have reactions turned on. So I know today you're going to see some things that you like. So make sure that you give Scott a thumbs up or a clap or a heart because he can see those reactions and it's just it just makes it fun. You, everyone who has registered today will get a link to the recording and um, in about 24 hours, and Scott, apologies, I did not ask about a slide deck, um, but you can just let me know. Uh, so you'll get that in 24 hours, and then um, I think that's it. I think that's it. All right, so let me introduce Scott. He's a partner at the Harvard Computing Group, and um, he's a co-inventor of Task Map, which is a Visio add-in. He's worked on clients in, in 10 countries on all kinds of projects that are involving process mapping, redesign, knowledge mapping, and technology. Um, as I mentioned, he is a Microsoft MVP, and, um, and he's got some great stories to tell as well. So this is just the start of that journey. So Scott, I will turn it over to you. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you very much. And um, yes, you're right. We, we didn't talk about uh, slides, but I anticipated the question. In fact, on the very next slide, there's a QR code and a download link. And this download link does work. I know that. Uh, both of the QR code and the download link will allow you to grab a copy of not only a PDF version of the slides, but also a, they, they're actually packaged in a zip file because that file also includes the um, exercise files that I'm going to be using today in case you want to try some of these things on your own. And you know what? Having said that, I just realized I made two clerical errors. One was some of you noticed a few minutes ago, and the other is I believe I posted only the PDF and not the zip file. So if you use the QR code or this download link right now, this moment, you will get just the PDF of the slides. Immediately after the session ends, I will update that so it's actually the zip file that has the slides and the demo files. So what is it I want to do? What, what, what are the 16 tips? What are the categories for the 16 tips that I want to cover with you in the next in, in this hour? There, I broke them into five categories. We're going to talk about ways to let Visio do the work for you. There are some, some really nice and convenient features. And I know that some of you will have used some of them. Others of you will have not, but that's great. That's, that's what we all can do is learn from each other here. So let Visio do the work for you. So a couple of general tips so that you can uh, make your way around a, a group of tips about navigating so you can become a power user in, in many ways, including being able to make your way or not only within a diagram, but from di a diagram to other places. We'll talk about working with data, and this will be a very short conversation. I'll explain why in a couple of minutes, but uh, today's part of it will be short. I'll give you the hint right now. The real reason is that we're going to cover data and Visio in much more detail in the rest of the uh, sessions in this series of four that I'm doing. And then finally, you're going to you're going to create great stuff in Visio. You probably already have in your past, but regardless, whatever you have created, whenever you've created it, you want to share it with others. And not everybody in the world, heaven forbid, has Visio. So we, we want to cover some ways that you can share all or parts of a Visio diagram with people who don't have Visio, or even if they do, either way. So that's my plan. Uh, Susan already talked about these things about me. Uh, I'll just mention two others. One, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, this QR code in the upper right-hand corner will connect you to my profile on LinkedIn. Feel free to use that for that purpose. Uh, also, I am a, an instructor and author at LinkedIn Learning. So if you're interested in more information about Visio, um, there are videos available there at LinkedIn Learning and also a couple of books that I've written about Visio over the last 15 years. 
So let's see, it looks like about 80 some odd people have responded to the poll here. So let me share the results with you. Do it this way. And I was curious what, what sort of level of experience you would self-identify. Uh, and it looks like between the category of, I don't know anything, and I'm a, I'm a power user, looks like this is what the curve appear, how the curve appears, and your average experience level uh, with Visio is 2.4 on a scale of five. Beyond that, we have versions of Visio, and this is as much for my own benefit as anything else. I'm curious to know who's using the new subscription version, Visio Plan 2, who's using the, the desktop versions of Visio Professional or Visio Standard. And also, uh, some of you, quite rightfully, are still using older versions of Visio, not the very latest, because your companies are still in those places, and that's fine. Um, a handful of you are using the free version of Visio that runs in a web browser that comes with Microsoft 365. That was in an announcement from Microsoft about, it, uh, I think it was 18 months ago, give or take, that anybody with a Microsoft 365 subscription has a version of Visio. It's of limited capability, of course, because, hey, it's free, but it runs in any browser on any device. Mac users, no problem. You want to do Visio diagrams on your iPad or on a, on a Surface Pro, anything, any device, any browser. Nobody is using Visio Plan 1, uh, which is also browser-based, but has a, a larger set of capabilities than Visio, uh, the, the free version of Visio for M365. And then a couple of dozen of you aren't sure, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, if you want to find out afterwards, I've just hovered over the title here and it pops up and says, if you go to InVisio, go to File Account, that will tell you which version of Visio you've got. All right, so thank you. Um, one other comment about the versions. The first part of what I'm going to talk about today applies to almost everything, including the free version of Visio uh, for, for, for Microsoft 365, the seven of you have. A little bit later, uh, further into the session, we're going to get into some tips that apply only to some of the data capabilities in Visio and some of the more advanced capabilities. Those will be in, in either Visio Professional or Visio Plan 2. Um, I'll try to distinguish, but by and large, most of what I'm going to talk about applies in all the desktop versions of Visio, and also in um, many of them also apply to the, the free and the Visio Plan 1 web browser-based versions. So cool. Thank you very much. Well, we're up to 95 people who've answered the poll. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I put those polls up there, and sometimes nobody responds. Well, that's not true, but not everybody does. So I appreciate those of you who did. All right, first category, let Visio do the work. So I'm gonna show you a couple of slides here with four or five tips, and then we're gonna go to live software and actually demonstrate these. But I just wanna give you a sense of things that you can take advantage of that Visio will do for you. First on that list is using something called the dynamic grid. Now, anybody who's used Visio from about six or seven years ago earlier, knows that when you launched a Visio diagram, it always had a, an actual grid on the page. Long about Visio, I think it was 2013, Microsoft decided to make the page look cleaner. So the diagrams, typically when you create them, don't have that fixed grid on the page. You can always turn it back on on the view menu. That's not one of my tips, but you just got an extra one. However, what you can do is take advantage of this thing called the dynamic grid for aligning and sizing and several other things. I'll show you that in just a moment. We'll also take a look at, this is tip number two, at some really, really handy little blue triangles that you may have wondered what the heck they are. And I'll be honest, sometimes they may actually get in your way. I'll talk about that in a, in a couple of minutes. These are the auto connect triangles or auto connect arrows, some people refer to them. When you hover over a shape in many kinds of Visio diagrams, you will see a, a north, south, east, and west pointing triangle, and they, they do some marvelous things. One thing that you can do if you have two shapes on the page, as I've drawn here, is you can click that triangle and Visio will fire a connector across the gap and link those two shapes together. 
the auto connect arrows also work in conjunction with something called the quick shapes menu. And this is tip number three. And again, I'll be demonstrating these live in just a second, but I wanna set context first. So we've got those triangles that we can use by themselves for a couple of things, but the quick shapes menu is a way to avoid you having to take your mouse and go back to the stencil and drag another shape onto the page and go back to the stencil and drag another shape onto the page. You can actually click and have shapes magically appear. Well, I think it's semi-magical anyway. It's really a very handy and a lot of labor saving. I use this all the time and it's, uh, you know, how much time do I save in a day? I don't know, but it's, it's real. The fourth tip is to know that the quick shapes menu has exactly four things on it. And they, you may wonder where they came from. And I'll show you in just a moment that you can actually alter which things are on the quick shapes menu. So that, that'll be tip number four. And then tip number five is related to something I said a moment ago. Sometimes either the dynamic grid or auto connect and especially auto connect in certain diagrams those features actually kind of get in the way. And so it is really important to know how to turn them off. And this slide, and in all cases on my slides, I wanna make sure that you have these available so you can refer to the slides later to know how to take advantage of this tip or another tip. So let's go back to, or let's go straight to Visio. And I'm on the, the new page here, file new. I'm gonna just, pick of the flowchart template as a basic one to start with. And let's, I could use one of the predefined templates. And here's another, another bonus tip. Many Visio diagrams let you start with a blank page. In fact, all Visio templates that are packaged with the software let you start a new diagram with a blank page. But many templates, like the flowchart template here, include sample diagrams. So you're not staring at a blank page when you first get started. In this case, I am gonna choose the blank page and choose create. And many of you I'm sure have created flowcharts. I didn't ask about diagram types, but I'd be willing to bet BAs around the world, flowcharts are what we do often. Lots of other things too, but diagram types, but flowcharts for sure. So let me talk about the dynamic grid and demonstrate it. So I'm gonna drag a process shape onto the page. Now, the dynamic grid comes into play when you have two or more shapes for the most part, although there is a case where if I move this shape around a little bit, when it's the first shape, actually, let me back up and do that again. Let me drag this shape onto the page and I've still got the mouse button down. When I get to certain places, there's your first evidence of the dynamic grid. There's a dashed vertical line that appeared and if I move around elsewhere, there's a dashed horizontal line. And if I get in exactly the right place, there are lines in both directions. That's Visio telling me, hey, you wanna drop this shape right here? It will be dead center vertically or horizontally on the page as you wish. There also is dynamic feedback on the margins of the page. So you notice the dashed green lines that appear across the top and down the side or just down the side, just at the top. So that, that feedback is all about letting you let go of the mouse button and know that a shape is where you want it to be. I'm gonna drop that one there. The rest of the dynamic grid feedback comes into play when we have more than one shape on the page. So I'm gonna choose, uh, let's take the, the start end shape. And notice that when I am near the process shape that's already on the page, I get several kinds of things that are appearing that are dashed green lines. Let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see even better. And let's take this start end again. And notice there's, that kind of looks like I must be aligned at the middle of the shape. And lo and behold, if I do it up here, I can see that I'm aligned to the center. Now here I get three lines because I'm not only aligned to the center, but this shape is exactly the same width as the rectangle below. So I get a pair of dashed lines down the edges as well. Here, the heights are different, but I, so I get middle or top or bottom. Now, so far so good, but look at that. There's a double headed arrow that appeared and then disappears. That is spacing. So the dashed lines help me with alignment there is spacing feedback that Visio provides. In this case, you may not have been aware of this before, but most Visio templates have a predefined spacing interval built into the template. 
And what we're seeing here is a reflection of that interval. Vizio is telling me with that double-headed arrow, if you let go of the mouse button right now, you will find that this shape is aligned at the exact interval set for this page. Now, I don't have to do that. I can, I can do this. And that's fine. But here's an interesting thing. When I drop the next shape or drag the next shape onto the page, I get feedback that says, hey, Scott, those two rectangles are now at the default spacing interval. And I know that because I see one double-headed arrow between those two shapes. But if I scooch this over just a little bit to the right, look at that. I now see two double-headed arrows. So Visio is not only able to tell me that I am at the interval defined for the page, but it's now giving me feedback that says this new shape is the same distance from the one in the middle as the one in the middle is from the one on the left. And again, I don't have to use that. I can drop this anywhere I want, but let's, let's go with it and drop it right there. And now I know I don't have to select the shape and nudge it up or down with the arrow keys. I know that these, this, these three shapes are spaced the way I want them to. There's a, another type of feedback. Let me drag a decision diamond onto the page. And I can yeah, I get all the same feedback. It's the same height and width as the process shape. So I get lots of, 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 of dashed lines there. But I'm gonna, I wanna talk about sizing. Let's make this a little bit taller, just for the sake of argument. This could be any shape. It just happens to be a decision diamond. Now let me take this shape over here. In fact, I'm gonna move it even farther away. I'm gonna put it way up in the corner here and I'm gonna make it taller just by dragging the handle down. Notice I get some intermediate dashed line feedback. Hey, look at that. Now there are two double arrows, one next to the shape I'm adjusting and one that's right next to the, that diamond shape. So I now know that those two shapes are the same height. And notice this works no matter where these things are on the page, they don't have to be near each other. If I go taller, then great, I've, I've passed the point of equality. I can go less and go back. If I want this to be the same shape as the, the other process shape, great, now they're, now they're that way. Let me go back and make it tall. The same thing works for width. In fact, this works in both directions at the same time. Let me, let me make this shape bigger by dragging the corner handle so it's, it's the aspect ratio is maintained, both height and width change. And let's do the same thing now with this rectangle. And we're gonna to get to a point here where I've got arrows light, lighting up on both sides of two shapes because the height and width match for the, that pair of shapes. And this would be true if I had 16 shapes on the page and I was adjusting one and it suddenly matched a dozen of them, you'd see arrows for all dozen. So I hope that's, that's useful. It's very helpful for me. And I'll, I'll say right up front here, I've, I've never decided whether the 20 years I've spent using Visio is because I'm OCD or am I OCD because I've spent 20 years using Visio. I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that question is, but there's a certain amount of obsessive compulsive. <laughs> yeah, a few of you are reacting. Yeah, I, so I'm, I've hit a chord there, right? I don't know whether I'm obsessive compulsive because of Visio or as a result of, or of Visio as a result of OCD, but you get the point and I appreciate that feedback. All right, uh, tip number two was about using auto connect. So let me add a new page. And by the way, another undocumented tip here, the plus sign at the bottom of the screen is the easiest way. So let me zoom in down there. Right next to the page names, the plus sign right here, if I hover, it says insert page. There's also a keyboard shortcut. Shift F11. I know a lot of keyboard shortcuts. I didn't remember that one. But in, in any event, let's add a new page. So plus sign, new page. Let's drag a shape onto the page, a process shape. And now let's take advantage of the auto connect in several different ways. One way, illustrated on one of the slides, is if I have a shape that is in the direction that one of these triangles points. And again, let me zoom in here. And I click the triangle, Visio fires an arrow across the gap. Works really well. And I can do that. And I can lay out a flow chart in like record time just by clicking and clicking. And that works in both directions. If I want to add a decision diamond down below and another process shape off to the right, cool. Well, you just saw me do two things. One was close the gap. 
And now I was using the quick shapes menu. So that's one of the other tips. And I've got four things here that show me live previews so I can see what I'm gonna get before I click. How about a subprocess shape? Sure, let's take one of those. So I've used the quick shape, I'm uh, sorry, the, the auto connect triangles for two things so far to close the gap and in conjunction with the quick shapes menu to add a new shape to the page without having to go drag and drop. What else can we do with the quick shapes menu? Well, let's say we've got this decision diamond up here and I wanna connect this process shape in the center to that decision diamond shape. Many of you have probably used the connector tool and I can go up here and I can click connector and I can click and drag from here to here and I got a, I've got a connector. So that solves the problem. It meets the purpose I had in mind. But is there another way to do that? Because among other things, when you click the connector tool, the tools in this part of the toolbar up here that cleverly it's called the tools section, these are all persistent tools. When you select one of them, it remains the active tool until you choose something else. So I can, I can click and draw connectors all day long here until I go back and click on pointer tool. Now the cursor is back to being the arrow. Here's a really useful keyboard shortcut. It appears when I hover here. Let's do that again, hover, control and the number one. Just to show you, connector, draw one. The connector tool is persistent. You can see that there's a little connector below the cursor. If I type control one on my keyboard, instantly back to the pointer tool. So control one, a couple of you like that tip. Yeah, control one is really helpful. Meanwhile, back at the branch here, uh, and I wanna add a branch. So I wanna, I wanna take this away. I'm gonna delete this connector and this connector, and I wanna put this decision as part of a branch in my process. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna manually add a couple of, a couple of connectors here and get out of hyper zoom mode here so the screen doesn't jump around quite so much. I'm gonna add another process shape over here. Now I wanna connect these shapes together. I could go use the connector tool and take advantage of that, but we're gonna use those auto connect arrows for one more cool thing. And that is hover here, click on the arrow, but don't release the mouse button and drag. Dragging any one of those four triangles will automatically create a connector. So now I can go, okay, I want that one there. And let's do the same thing. Oh, here's my branch. I was said back at the branch and let's do that. Oops, I missed it. Let's do that this way and connect it to here. And now I've, I've just added three connectors in, in record time. So these auto connect arrows are wonderful for four or five different things. And that's, that's that whole collection of, of tips there, the first four tips. Uh, sorry, first three tips. I, I said I would show you how to change what's on the, the uh, Quick Shapes menu. Right now, when I hover and the Quick Shapes menu appears, it's process, start end, diamond, and subprocess. Well, why is it those four shapes? It's always four, but why those four? The answer is the first four shapes at the top of the current stencil. And to make, let's, let's do this to make it even more clear what's going on here. Let me collapse this window. And so we've got process, start, end, decision diamond, and subprocess exactly as we have on the quick shapes menu. If I want, if I use document shapes a lot and I really want that instead of subprocess, drag it right up here, hover, quick shapes menu appears, document shape. So it is the first four shapes in the stencil. You can drag them around. Put the forward that you like most, that you use most, right there at the top. You can see just from the, the thumbs up that are flying up my screen over here on my right, uh, I can see that many of you may have wondered about what, why are those four shapes the ones that are there? Well, now you know. And then finally, these tips that I've given you about both Dynamic Grid and Auto Connect, really helpful, but sometimes those features get in the way. I'm going to go to the View menu up here. And we see checkboxes for dynamic grid and auto connect. If I turn off dynamic grid, then guess what? I can resize this shape all day long and there's no reaction whatsoever from Visio. If I turn off auto connect, then I can hover all day long and there are no blue triangles that appear. I find 
I seldom turn off dynamic grid. In a very busy diagram, I often turn off auto connect because there's so much more that it does to me instead of for me if I'm not careful. So that's the, that's the first gaggle of tips. Let's go back and move on to some general tips. And by the way, um, I'd love to have your questions. As Susan mentioned, you can use the Q&A. Um, generally speaking, I'll probably save most of the questions. And if any come in, I'll save them till the end because this is a busy session. There's a lot to dispense here in, in terms of little nuggets. So uh, Susan, if there is a question that's relevant to something I'm talking about right at that moment, feel free to interrupt me. If I notice it, I will, I will respond. But uh, otherwise, I'll probably save most of the questions for the end. So general tips. One of the most annoying things for a majority of Visio users that I've talked to over the years is, why does Visio do what it does with the connections between shapes? Why doesn't it do what I want it to do, right? Visio seems to have a mind of its own when it comes to linking shapes together and the way those lines go where seemingly Visio wants them to go. Well, guess what? There are two ways to deal with the lines between shapes. And it's important to distinguish between lines and connectors, which I'll do in just a second. But there's, there is a way that does leave Visio in control, and there's a way that leaves you in control of where the lines appear on the page. Let's go straight to Visio and take a look at that. I'm going to go back to that same diagram in progress and just let me add a new page, start with a clean page here. And, oh, no, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I have, I have a diagram for that. Let me start instead with this one. Now, what's here on this page, it's important to make a couple of distinctions. These four re yellow rectangles that say drawn with the rectangle tool, those are indeed shapes that I went up here on the, on the tools menu. I clicked rectangle. I drew a rectangle. I added some text. I colored it yellow. So those are very generic. I'll, I will say dumb because many Visio shapes are smart. These are just generic, dumb rectangle shapes. Nothing magic about them at all. Let's take a look at these yellow, red lines here. Uh, these are generic, ordinary lines. They were created using the line tool. So we have the rectangle tool. We also have the, a line tool. So they have no particular smarts. They have, they're just lines. Now, they happen to be red and a little thicker because I, I made them that way because I want you to be able to see them clearly on the page and also to distinguish them from the connector arrows that are down here. So the red lines were created with, with the line tool right here. The green arrows were created with the connector tool that we've already talked about a couple of times. So what difference does that make? Well, let's do this. I'm going to take this red line, and I'm going to drop it right here, and I'm going to seemingly connect it right here, and we're good. We have two rectangles that are connected with a red line until I move one of the rectangles. And lo and behold, it was the appearance of being connected, not the actuality of being connected. So no matter where I put this thing, no matter what I do, it, it's just two boxes and a line in between. If I take a dynamic connector, remember these rectangles at the bottom are exactly the same as the ones at the top. They're just dumb shapes with no smarts. Yet, if I take this connector and I get near one or the other, that simple rectangle lights up with a green border. So let's do that on both ends. I'm going to drop that end here, and I'm going to drop this end over here. And now what we have created and the symbolism of that green outline, and by the way, I should point this out, when I hover, you'll notice that there's pop-up text that says glue to shape. What we have just created is what in Visio terms is called dynamic glue. This is a type of glue that behaves this way. Notice that the entry point and exit point of the ends of the arrow change based on the relative position of the shapes. Dynamic glue leaves Visio in charge. You're saying to Visio, when you glue to a shape with a green border around it, 
you're saying to Visio, you're the boss. I'm going to put these shapes somewhere. You connect them via the shortest path. And that's exactly what Visio does here. Dynamic glue is all about Visio. Um, these connectors, by the way, they do have some right click options. If you've never explored, you might try right click and choose curved connector, for example, and you get these swoopy little arrows that are kind of fun to play with, depending on the kind of diagram you're creating. But regardless, Visio is still in charge. It decides which exit point and which entry point to your shapes to use. So far, so good. Now let's go to this page. And these four rectangles are not just dumb rectangles. These are actually flowchart process boxes, the exact same as what we used a few minutes ago. I did go to the design tab and pick a particular theme. And I happened to pick a theme that I know will show the connection points that I'm about to present to you very clearly. So that's this theme called WISP. But these are flowchart shapes. How do they behave differently in response to a line than ordinary rectangles do? Well, you notice when I get near, and once again, let me zoom in so you can see a little bit more clearly here. When I get near these shapes, something does happen. There are four dots, or they're actually tiny squares at the top, the bottom, the left and the right of that shape and that shape. Those are what are called connection points. And this is where you get to be in charge, okay? When I move this near that connection point, there's pop-up that says glue to connection point. Let's do the same thing over here and come back out a little bit so I can move these around. Now, when I grab this shape and drag it somewhere else, a line is indeed glued. And you've said to Visio, even if I go over here, I want that line to always exit this shape on the right and enter this shape on the left. Now, this particular result may not be exactly what you had in mind, but that's what is what you've said to Visio. I'm in charge, I'm gluing to connection points. It gets even better when you use a dynamic connector instead of a dumb line. I still get the same light up the whole shape and glue to the shape if I want to, but what I want to do right now is create what's called static glue. I'm going to glue to that connection point, glue to this connection point, and now you see behavior similar to what we saw on the previous page, and that is you're in charge. You're telling Visio the line coming out of the flowchart shape that's highlighted this at this moment always exits from the, the right center, and it always enters the other shape at the left center. And again, it's completely up to you which type of glue. Dynamic glue is great for many things when you want Visio to be in charge. Static glue is great when you want to be in charge. All right, I'm talking a lot here so and showing a lot. So let me uh, go a little quicker to keep up with the number of tips we have left. We got 10 left to go. So glue to connection points. Navigation, when you want to move around within a diagram, you, it's easy when you can see all the tabs representing each of the pages in your diagram. But if you have a diagram with more pages than fit across the bottom, you have some choices to make about how to navigate. And let's take a look at that. I have a diagram here whose sole purpose in life is to have a lot of pages. I mean, I literally created it just to have a bunch of pages. And on each page, there's a page number in the bottom right and a number of stars that matches the page number. And the only reason for that is so if I click on page four or page nine or page 12, you, you can see what page we're on. When you have more pages, this diagram has about 20 pages. And if I zoom in down on the bottom, you can see page two over to page 12 and there's PAG here. So you know there's more there, but you don't know what or how many. Two ways to navigate very easily in a diagram that don't involve clicking the page tabs. One is the tip that was on the screen here just a second ago. Use the control key and the page up, page down keys to do this. So I'm, I'm holding down control and I'm doing page up. Page up goes in the reverse direction. So you notice the page numbers are changing, 789, sorry, 9876. And page down goes in the reverse direction. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and so forth. 
So just hold down the control key, use page up and page down to go to adjacent pages. If you want to go directly to some other page, then what you need is the all button. So at the end of the page name section, where the page name tabs are, just before the plus sign for inserting new pages is the all button. Let's click all. And what you see is a list of all the page names in the diagram. Now, I left these deliberately as short names so I could get more tabs visible. But even if the page names are long, you'll still see a full list of all the pages here. The current page is bold. So you'll see page 13 in, in bold uh, font there. But let's go directly to page three or directly to page 18. Trivially easy. Just remember the all button shows you all of the pages that exist. There are other shortcuts that can do a similar thing, but that's the easiest thing. All right. Now, one of my pet peeves, I'm gonna show you some things to do, and I'm specifically gonna talk about some things not to do where it comes to having text in a Visio diagram. Let's go directly to the page, uh, to a diagram. And it is this one in number 30. If you're going to follow along at home later and want to use the sample files when I post them right after the end of this session, you'll find this diagram, number 30. It's got some shapes with text on them. Now, these two rectangles at the top here look exactly the same. They both look like process boxes from a flowchart, and they are, and they both say do some work. Well, I need to rearrange my diagram now. So I'm going to grab this and drag it over here, no problem at all. This one looks exactly the same, right? So I'm going to click and drag. Whoops. Here's the do not. Do not, in general, do not use a separate text box when you want to label a shape in Visio. There's almost always a better way. And that way is to take advantage of the fact that you can type directly onto a shape and add some text. Now, some of you are sitting there thinking, well, yeah, this is a process box. This is a text box. Well, I'm smart. I've used Visio before. I can select both of them, type Control G to group the two shapes together. And now when I move, hey, the text goes with it because it's a group that consists of both of those things, a text box and the process box. Great. Now you want to change this text, right? So you're going to select the shape and do what you usually do, either double click or press F2, function key F2, to go into edit mode. And I'm going to say, do some more, whoops, I'm going to type almost approximately correctly, do some more work. Looks good, right? Except that a group is also a shape. And if we look at this really closely, you'll see the original text underneath and the new text on top. So I've got shape, I've got text on the process box or actually in the text box sitting on top of the process box. And I've also added shape to the group, which means it's really awkward. You have to remember to click twice to get the sub shape and yeah, not don't do that. Let's take a look at an alternative instead. Here are three shapes. This one is the standard database sort of symbol in Visio flowcharts. And if I click and drag, move it, yeah, that text goes with it. Here's one where we've got text down below. Sure looks like a separate text box somebody hung down there, right? But you know what? If I move that, the text goes with it. What about this one? It looks exactly the same. Oh no, that is a separate text box. So how did I create this so that the text is part of the shape? And sure enough, if I double click, I can change the text and it still is part of the shape. How did I do that? Well, let's take this shape and I'll show you exactly how to do that. The key is one and more tool up here on the home tab. And it's specifically this rather obscure looking tool here in the lower right. You hover over it, it says text block tool. And sure enough, that's the one we want. I, I don't know where that symbolism comes from.
Hi, gang. Okay, it looks like we lost Scott. I feel like he's going to be right back, by the way. Um, sometimes these things happen. Um, so while we're waiting for him to come back, because I know that you guys are really excited about what you're learning. Um, let's see. Let me just catch you up on where we are. You're back, Scott. <laughs> You're almost unmuted. There will okay. be a recording. Oh my goodness. I apologize. I can see what happened. My ethernet connection dropped and I reverted to my wireless connection. Hmm. Usually when that happens, there's some kind of a landscaping device in my backyard <laughs> that's done something terrible. All right. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, how much did you miss? More than about 30 seconds, do you think? More than, a, yeah, more than about 30 seconds. I think you were just getting into where you were going to show us how to put the text at the bottom of the diagram. One of the very, very cool things. Let me, let me do that again quickly. So let's take this shape and I will add database to it as a name. And don't forget to share your screen. Oh yeah, thank you. Wow, I got disconnected. It disconnected my brain for a moment also. All right, so the point I was making is adding a text box to label a shape is generally a bad practice, but you can move the text that's part of a shape very easily when you know about the text Home tab, click text block. That's this tool right here in the lower right hand corner. So there's six tools up there. It's the one in the lower right. And now anything I do to this shape affects only the text block that is part of that shape, including moving the text around. So I can put it here, for example, and let's nudge it down a little bit. And now I'll use the Control One keyboard shortcut. So I'm back to the pointer tool. And sure enough, if I move this guy around, if I change it to HR database, that's text that is part of the shape. I don't have to sub-select. This is the thing to do. Use the capabilities to add text to the shape. And if you want the text to be in a different place, just remember this text block tool right here in the lower right in the tools section. So now on to one of my favorite things, added in Visio 2010. It's, there's, there's a set of features that are referred, uh, that are collectively known as structured diagram capabilities. They are lists, containers, and callouts. And I'm gonna do this quickly here and show you in a diagram that is number 40, that you have had a, the ability to add callouts to shapes in Visio for a long time. If you go to more shapes, um, Visio extras and callouts, you can open a stencil full of callouts. That's nice. They are they work okay, but they have some funny properties. If I add it to the shape, notice it lights up in green, so I can glue to the shape. I can add my text here. Looks like it's attached to that shape, and that's cool. What if I'd like to move it? Well, I'm going to select this thing and I'm going to drag it over here. And you know what? When I drag it, it disconnects, which is really not very useful. Let me undo and go back. If I move this pallet of equipment, the, the line just gets longer. The, the comment, the, the callout doesn't move with it. Well, okay, you can play with those. They have some nice features. But what's really nice is if I select this shape on the right, go to the insert menu, and here's a callout gallery. I'll choose one that's fairly simple. Notice there are some nicely stylized ones too. I'm going to choose a fairly simple one here. I can do the same thing. First of all, I'll automatically glued to the shape because I selected the shape first. I'm going to type some random text here. And if I select this and decide I want to move it and click and drag, hey, look at that. It remembers what it's attached to no matter where I put it. And if I move the shape, the callout goes with it, which is kind of like what you'd want, right? If I were to delete this palette over here on the, the left, the comment hangs around. What, what use is that? In this case, these two things are associated with each other. So not only do they know relative position regarding each other, but if I delete the shape, the comment, the callout goes away too. It's a great way to add annotations to your diagrams. 
I can see some hearts and thumbs. So yeah, some of you are appreciating the value of that in diagrams that you create. The second thing is about containers. Containers are special Visio objects that know what's inside them. And oh, by the way, the things inside know that they are contained and where they're contained. And I'll just show you on the left, a way that we typically in the past have had to show visual relationships. And that's by doing something like drawing a rectangle. So I'm gonna use the right click menu and do a one-time rectangle here. And I'm gonna send it to the back. So right click and send it to the back. And that kind of looks like those are all related to each other now, that's cool. Uh, if I wanna move the whole shebang here, I move the rectangle and the shapes don't go with it. So this is where those of you who have used group before are gonna say, yeah, but just take those things and group. And now, now it's good, we're, we're good. We can move this and they all go with it. Well, so far so good, but what if I wanna make this taller? So I'm gonna drag the bottom handle and I'm stretching the rectangle, but I'm also stretching the shapes inside it. And oh, by the way, if I wanna add another shape, let's say I'm gonna use control D to duplicate this shape, because I wanna grab this shape and move it over here. Oh, so I've, I've added it. It looks like it's part of the group, right? Until I move the group and lo and behold, that shape is not part of the group. So what's the alternative? It's these really cool things called containers. I've selected three shapes that are, let's say this is the emergency room of this hospital. On the same insert menu is a gallery of containers. And you can see you get live preview here. You can see what these things are gonna look like as I hover over the different ones. Let's just pick this one. I drag it over and notice that there's a green border that lights up. So Visio is saying, hey, something's gonna happen here. And lo and behold, when I drop it, it's in the container. Are we sure? Yes, because when I move it, it goes with it. If I delete this container, everything including its contents go away. I'm gonna undo and bring it back. And one other point too, is if I wanna label this group over here on the left and I type some text, so far so good, it appears randomly in the middle of that group and it's partially obscured here. If I click anywhere on this heading and type my text, there's a place for it. There's a built-in heading for a container. And oh, by the way, if I drag this thing out of here, it's truly out. It's not part of the container anymore. And yes, yeah, you can see here, I can resize the container and the objects inside don't get weirdly distorted and resized. So containers are a truly wonderful thing. I use them all the time. Swim lane diagrams in Visio use containers and their, their cousins lists for the same sort of idea. All right, gonna get going here. Got a few more tips. Navigating, we already saw control page up, page down, but here's a tip that one of the first things I do whenever I install Visio on a new machine is I turn on this setting in file options on the advanced tab to center selection on Zoom. And let me show you why. If I go to any drawing, and let's just take this one, I can take a shape, let's take that one. And if I happen to move my cursor over where it is now, and I use control mouse wheel to zoom, the thing I just highlighted zooms right off the page. Not very helpful. Chances are if I selected that thing, it's because I wanna work on it, right? And I'm zooming in because I wanna do something that involves more detail. So. Go to File, Options, and choose the Advanced Page, and check Center Selection on Zoom. It's as easy as that. Click OK, and now watch what happens. I select this thing, move my cursor over here, roll the mouse wheel, and that selected shape is dead center on the screen as I zoom in and out. So I don't know about you, but that's, most of the time when I select something and I zoom in, I want to work on that thing. So it saves me time every single day. Hyperlinks from page to page, very handy way for navigating. Let's go to a diagram that happens to be a floor plan. And it's a floor plan, but it's a whole building directory. 
And I've created it in a way that this little directory over here, fifth floor, notice when I hover, it says there's a, there's a hyperlink there. You can see the cursor change. And if I click control, pardon me, if I hold down the control key and click, which is how you follow a hyperlink inside a Visio diagram, boom, it's taken me to this page. Now I'm gonna go back to the directory again because you can actually create hyperlinks that are not only to a shape, uh, so to, sorry, to a page, but to a specific shape on the page. I happen to have created one like that here for Office 5F. Control, click, and it took me to the same page, but notice Office 5F is centered on the screen and we zoomed in. So how do we do that? Here's the short version of doing that. Let's take Office 5C. The key to building the hyperlink in the first place is Control K, same shortcut for Word, Excel, and PowerPoint as well. Control K as in hyperlink. The key here is the, one of the most obscure features in Visio, and that is you don't do anything with the address button when you're linking to another page in the same diagram. Instead, you click the browse button next to sub address. That's obvious, right? that pops up a dialogue that gives you a dropdown of all the pages in the diagram. So click fifth floor. Here's where you can set the zoom level. So I can say, I always wanna see the full page view or I can I wanna see some percentage zoomed in or zoomed out. I'll go with full page view, click okay. And I can add a description here. Go to fifth floor. I'll just, for the sake of time, I will go to five and click okay. So, so far so good, this is Office 5C. And now when I control click, remember, by the way, on the fifth page, we're zoomed in at the moment to Office 5F. When I set up this hyperlink, I said, I wanna see the full page. Lo and behold, the zoom happens automatically as part of the hyperlink. There is a way, a little bit beyond what we're gonna to do today to zoom into a specific shape like Office 5F and you can build those hyperlinks in. You'll find that tip documented in several places in, on the web. Uh, it's also in my books uh, as well. When you create hyperlinks to a, an external resource, you can get even more specific, kind of like viewing another, linking to another page and zooming in on a shape. You can link to a document and zoom in on a bookmark. And I'll, again, in the interest of time, I'll choose part of that. Let's take this policy manual document here. I like to think of a process diagram of any sort as the central repository for all knowledge about a process. I want to be able to make the user have all resources available with just a click or two. So I'm gonna control K to open the hyperlink dialog here. And this is a case where I do wanna use the address box because I wanna to link to, in this case, a Word document. So browse, local file is a bad name. It can, the file can be anywhere, it doesn't have to be local. In my case, it happens to be, it's in this documents folder. I've got, oh no, it looks like I have no documents here, but that's because Visio is a little bit self-centered. It assumes you must wanna to link to a Visio diagram. I will disabuse it of that notion by using this dropdown and choosing office files that will reveal all office type document types that are in this folder. Here is the policy manual, click open. And now I've got a hyperlink, click okay. And if I click on this link, it will indeed open the Word document. Happen to do it on another monitor. Now let me drag it up here, whoops. But it, it did indeed open this <laughs> the Zoom toolbar is in the way of the document header. There it is. So here's, here's the HR policy manual Word document. If you put bookmarks into a Word document or you use name cells or cell ranges in uh, an Excel workbook, when you create this hyperlink, just put that name, the bookmark name or the cell name in the sub address box. And magically, the document will open, but it will open at the specific bookmarked or named place inside the external document. That's a cool thing. All right, five minutes. Um, so I'm I'm running a little behind Susan. We'll uh, we'll get there. 
This is the tip I'm going to show you that is only a the barest of brief mentions today because this is the whole focus of the next couple of sessions is what do you do with data in a Visio diagram? To know that there is data in shapes, right-click any shape, select data and shape data, and a dialog box like this will appear. Every flowchart you've ever seen in cre or created in Visio has seven predefined data fields. You may not have ever known they were there. These are what they are named. I've added some data values here. Lots more about data and data visualization coming up. Last two tips. If you want to share the contents of a diagram, there are multiple ways to do it. One of the kind of interesting ways is, I don't know about you, but very often I want just a piece of the diagram as a picture that I can drop into a Word document or a PowerPoint slide. Let's take this floor plan that we were looking at a moment ago, and let's say I want to take this part of the diagram right here. I'm going to select this office and the furniture in it. In fact, let me hold down the shift key and I'll select all this good stuff. So I've just selected that. I'm going to choose File, Export, and over on the left here, change file type. This is the secret. And now I'm going to choose PNG image and save as. And it asks me where I'd like to put it. It's right here in my 16 tips folder. I can specify some details about how the image should be created. But the bottom line is I now have, let me open it for you. I now have an image that is just an ordinary image. I can do anything I want with it, drop it into PowerPoint wherever I'd like it to be. So you can be very specific about what you select and export as an image. The real key and the last tip and the thing that I hope you will use going forward if you haven't already is to share Visio diagrams with people who either have Visio or don't have Visio. And what I love about this is you don't have to export, you don't have to change file formats, you don't have to do anything. All you need to do is take your Visio diagram and store it in either OneDrive for Business or SharePoint Online, and that diagram is now viewable in any web browser on any device. And I, I doubted Microsoft, I'll be honest, I'm a skeptic at times. I doubted Microsoft when they said that, when they introduced this capability five or six years ago. I'll be darned if it isn't true. I've never seen a diagram that doesn't appear equally well on a Mac, on an iPhone, on an Android phone, on whatever. Let me show you a simple example right now. This happens to be Chrome in, on my Surface Pro here. Here's an org chart. It's adorned with some things we'll do next time, create visualizations for data that's in this diagram or that's actually in an HR database that's linked to this diagram. I'm looking at it in a browser. I can zoom in. I can pan back and forth in the diagram. I can even select a shape, click the button that says Shape Info, and see all the data that is part of that shape. Here's another example. This happens to be a swim lane diagram. We're using this diagram not just as the best practice view of the process, but also we're, we've connected it to a status database and the shapes change colors automatically based on whether the step has been completed, started, finished, whatever. Again, you'll learn how to do this in the next session or two. And one final example, this happens to be our task map Visio add-in specific style of creating data-rich process maps. And we've adorned it with some actual versus estimated time for completion of these steps in this process and so forth. And with that, let me give you some resources. I'll we'll belabor this, but you've got some links you can follow in the diagram that you can download. If you want copies of the slides, wait about 10 minutes and you can go to um, you know, snap a picture of this QR code now, and then you can go follow the link in about 10 minutes and I'll up to, upload the zip file that has all the sample diagrams. Here are some LinkedIn learning courses of mine. And finally, this is how to get in touch with me. And if you're interested in a free download of, the, of, of a version of TaskMap called TaskMap Lite, you can use that link or that QR code. I encourage you to connect with me on LinkedIn using the link here as uh, reach me, reach out to me via email if you have questions, comments, thoughts. And Susan, 
I ran over. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. Listen, this is the first webinar where there's been a collective panic when you froze. Uh, <laughs> you were getting lots of shocked faces and uh, lots of concern because it was always right at the moment where you were going to give us a really great tip. I, I I have let the group know, you know, if you want to answer any questions, because you do have quite a few questions, um, I'm, okay, happy I'm, to, I'm happy to hang around. Yeah. And, and then for those of you that need to leave, don't worry, this part will also be included in the recording and you'll get that in 24 hours. As, um, as Scott also mentioned, you'll, you'll be able to get that link and you can download his slide deck as well. So, um, well, let's take a couple of questions here. Okay. Uh, so first question is from Harris. Did you say the dynamic grid is there by default or it needs to be turned on? Excellent question. The dynamic grid is on by default in most diagram types. The more specific answer is because that's a checkbox on the view tab, when someone creates a template, designs a template for, Visio, for a Visio diagram type, they can create the template with that box either checked or not checked. In many Visio, many of the templates that come with Visio, that box is checked. In most of the custom templates and stencils, the templates I create for clients, I have that checked because it's such a useful feature. So I think you'll find that the majority of Visio diagrams you, you create from a Microsoft supplied template, that box will be on. If it's not, go to the view tab, put a check mark and it's on. All right. Now this question is from Sandy and, and if Sandy is still on, I also have this problem. And, and so I need this answer too. <laughs> she asked, how do you set the connector default to contain an arrow or or any kind of custom arrow? Right now, hers is an arrowless connector. That's a good question that it takes a little bit longer to answer than I can do here. Um, I, actually, let me let me get a link and paste it into the chat. I, I wrote a series of three articles. Uh, I, actually, this is all in one article. I wrote an article a number of years ago that describes how to change something called the master or a shape that is inside something called the document stencil, which is normally not visible. So it would take me about 10 minutes to go through and demonstrate that for you. But let me do this. I've got- uh, I knew it I, I knew it seemed like it was hard because if there wasn't an option up on the toolbar, I was like, this must be a really difficult setting to change. Okay, so you have confirmed that. It is, yes, you, so you, you are forward. absolutely correct, Susan. It is, this is non-trivial. Uh, <laughs> you, will, you will amaze and stupefy your friends when you learn how to do this. All right, so so there you go. That's that's going to be a good one. Also, I'll make sure um, that, that that's that that's included in our follow-ups that we'll be sending out. Great, and today. I'm putting the link into the chat right now. So there it is. All right. Um, Perfect. Oh, I, unfortunately, that replied only to. That's okay. There you go. Oh, okay. Thank there you. There you go. All righty. So Evelyn has the next question. Okay. How do you save an individual page to an individual file? So her, her problem is right now she has to save all everything in order to save it to another Visio file and just remove it. So what's the better way? Yeah. Unfortunately, that probably is the way. So make a copy of your diagram and delete all the pages you don't need. Um, there, there isn't a save this page separately option. I will give you two options, however. One is that if you are familiar with or know someone who's capable of writing macros in VBA, the programming language that's built into all of the Microsoft Office applications, it's possible to do that. In fact, I, I, I have code that I've created for exactly that reason uh, to save off each page as a separate diagram in, in a specific circumstance. The other thing I'll mention is um, a guy who, let me find the URL and I'll paste this one in the chat also. There, there's a guy in the UK who's created something called the Visio Super Utilities. You may find it to be the best $29, I think that's the price roughly, um, the best $29 you've, you've ever spent if you're a, an avid Visio user. Um, let's get it here. I'm writing that one down too. 
Vizio super and, and he um, provides Paul Heber, Herber by name. Here it is. And we placed it in the chat as well. Um, this is a set of utilities that he's been maintaining for years, as you can see, through all of the current versions and past versions of Visio. And it has features that allow you to copy things and paste things in all different ways that you really want to do, but Visio doesn't let you do it directly. Ah, okay. Uh, let's see. Mark has the next question. Is it possible to set the text location for all subsequent shapes? Um, that goes back to the article I posted the link to a little bit earlier, oh, okay. uh, Mark. And so you can, yes, you can. You can create your own master for a shape that has exactly the attributes you want. You put it into a, you build, you create a custom stencil, which is actually, that may sound like a hard thing or seemingly hard thing, but creating a custom stencil is, is as easy as more shapes new stencil and Visio opens a blank stencil and then you create your shape that has the the text positioned where you want it and the colors and style and everything else you drop it in there and you can double click it and giving give it a more meaningful name perhaps but then when you drag it out onto the page it looks exactly like the master shape so that's that's a very short answer there's more <laughs> more detail in that article okay um, so this one is from Timothy. Is there a way to freeze the swim lane headers in a cross-functional flowchart? Mm -hmm. So when I scroll in a very wide flowchart, I can still see the swim lane names and headers. No, <laughs> short Ooh, answer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I again, I'll, I'll offer you a potential option. Um, let me just do this: file, swim lane diagram. Uh, what you're asking about is a common problem. You know, so if I if I drag this to make it wider and it spans multiple pages, and by the way, we can have a discussion about best practices about how wide you really want it to be and how wide it should be. But regardless, the fact is that the header over here is not visible when you're over at this part of the diagram. There's a guy named Chris Roth, R-O-T-H, who has a blog and website called Vizguy, V-I-S-G-U-Y dot com. Just full of articles that Chris has written over the, he, he was actually employed by Vizio Corporation before it was acquired by Microsoft and has been an independent consultant for decades now. Um, Chris is a, a fount of knowledge. He actually proposed a possible solution that, that basically replicates the header at both ends of the swim lane um, you'd have to search on his website, bizguy.com, and you will you'll find that article if you probably just uh, search for for swim lane um, and you, you you'll track it down. But bizguy.com is the website. All right. And I think that's it. I know we had uh, some questions that were in chat, but uh, but they didn't get moved over to Q and a. So um, we thank everybody. Um, for for, Can I interrupt for just one second, you, Susan. Yeah, I, I did see somebody who asked a question in the chat about whether it's possible to get all the links that I've mentioned. I know you're going to post them in the follow up email. Yep. Most of the links I mentioned, other than in the last 10 minutes, six minutes, are actually in the slides. So when you download the slides, that you'll have active hyperlinks in the slides. Oh, perfect. Always love slide decks with active, <laughs> active hyperlinks. So thank you so much. All right. Well, we want to thank everybody. Uh, remember, this is the first of four sessions. So the next three, I had popped those links in there. Um, Scott's going to come back and take us on a bit of a journey with, um, with Visio and then ending up with Power BI. Scott's also going to be at BBC in Las Vegas next week. So if you uh, are there, sign up for his session. You'll get more Visio fun. And um, this has been great. I mean, everybody's been really happy with all of these tips and I know they're going to watch this recording a couple of more times. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks everybody. Scott, right. I'll see you next week. Yes. Yeah. Take yeah, care. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thanks for your indulgence for letting me run over. <laughs> Bye. Bye.